In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Weebly.com to create your own website. And I think you'll be happy with and surprised by how easy it is to use this website builder. So here I am on Weebly.com and you'll notice that it says that I can use Weebly to create either a website or an online store. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on this aspect of Weebly, how to use it to create your own website. And down below, you can see some examples of the types of websites, kind of the look and feel that you can choose if you would like to when you use Weebly. But before we dive into how to use this website, I want to show you really quickly the pricing options that we have in Weebly. You can see that there is a free account option and it gives you most of what you would need if you just want to create a basic website. If you want something more, you'll need to pay. Now for those of you that are teachers, you can go all the way down to the bottom of the page and click on education and this gives you an option to create a completely free class website. And notice this, it lets your students build their own websites. One of the nice things about that is that you as the teacher can manage your students' accounts. They don't have to sign up for a Weebly account. You can just go in, create student accounts, and then you just give that login information to the students and they can sign into their own website that they can customize. So that's a really nice option for teachers. I'm just gonna go back and on Weebly.com, I'm gonna click Get Started with Create a Website. So I click that, it wants me to sign up for an account. I could sign up for an account using this Facebook button or Google Plus, or I could just use email and password. If I already had a Weebly account, I could click here to log in to that pre-existing account. So give me a minute to sign into or create my account, and then I'll resume the video. All right, so here I am in my account, and because this is my first time using Weebly with this account, it takes me to a page that will kind of help me get started using Weebly. Now before you get to this page, it may ask you if you want to create an e-commerce site. Do you want to open up a store, basically, using Weebly? And I would recommend if you're a teacher or if you don't really want to make a store right now, just say no, you don't want to create an e-store at this time. And that should take you now to this page where you can select a theme. Notice that they have different themes to choose from, business themes, portfolio themes, etc. I'm going to choose my theme from the personal category, and I think I'll go with this one here. So I click on it, it opens up with a theme preview. Looks good. If I like this, I can just click Start Editing, and that now will become the theme for my website. And it's building my website right now, at least the bare bones of my website. And here is my website. Now the next step is to choose a domain. And the domain that you choose will most likely be related to the topic of your website. So for me, of course, I believe the world needs a really good website about the best kind of music ever created, in my opinion, which is synth pop and new wave, which most definitely includes the 80s new wave and synth pop heroes, but also those of more recent years. So I would like to maybe call this Synth Pop Heaven. And look, the domain is available. www.synthpopheaven.com does look like it's available. Now just know, if you continue with this, you will be asked to pay. Okay, so it's loading payment information. Because I don't own that domain, synthpopheaven.com. So I would have to pay in order to reserve it. Now, if you already own a domain, you can click here and you can connect it to your Weebly account and you should be able to use that domain that you already own. What most teachers do, and even what most Weebly users overall do, is choose this option. Use a subdomain of weebly.com. So here, I can just type in synthpopheaven.weebly.com and it says the domain is available. And notice that this time, it doesn't end in .com, it ends in .weebly.com. But because it includes Weebly in the title, it will be free for me to use. So I click continue. It takes me to the home page of my website. Now there are some instructions here saying that you can drag and drop. I already know that, so I'm gonna click got it and I'm going to X out of that little pop-up screen. So now I can start customizing this home page of my website. And I can just go up here where it says Sarah Smith and I highlighted the text and I'm just gonna call this Synth Pop Heaven. Now notice that change that I just made is on the home page of my website. And I know that because home is outlined here. 
Now, depending on the theme that you choose, the indication of which page you're on might look a little different. It doesn't have to be a box like this. But watch, if I click on my work, the screen changes. If I click on about, the screen changes. But at the same time though, notice that the title of the site, Synthpop Heaven, stays the same on every page. Okay, underneath the title, I have a spacer, and I could just X out of that spacer if I don't want it, but I think it is kind of a nice look. So here, I don't know who Sarah Smith is, I'm just going to highlight all that text and replace it with an invitation to check out the synth pop and new wave scene. And I think I need a couple more exclamation points for emphasis. Okay, great. So there I have the beginnings of a website. So now it's really up to me to decide what to do next. Notice here at the left, I have several different elements that I can add to my website. If I need more text, I can just go up here to title and drag that onto the screen. There it is. Or if I prefer, instead of a title, I could put text on the screen. And I think I'll go with text. So I dropped it there underneath this bigger text. And like it says there, I can just click to edit. So give me a minute to type up some text and then I'll resume the video. Okay, so there's my text. It looks awfully tiny, so I'm going to select it. And notice here there are some text options. I can make it bigger, hopefully more readable. Now I may want to change the color as well to also make it more readable. So I can click here to change the font to be a color that will actually show up. In addition to text, notice that there are some multimedia options like images. I can click and drag image down there and then click to upload an image. I can upload it from my computer just by dragging and dropping the photo, or I could also just click here to do the same thing, to upload a photo from my computer. But this is an option I love. Just next to my computer, you can search the web for images. So I'll do a search for one of the more successful 80s synth pop bands, and that's Depeche Mode. And it didn't find any professional photos of Depeche Mode, but if I go to free photos, then it does find some images that I can use. Okay, so here's a good one. I would like to select that, and it's going to try to pull that image in and onto my home page. If you'd like to pull in a whole series of images, look, you can include a gallery. Just click and drag the gallery in there, upload multiple images, and all of those images will be included in the form of a gallery. So that's a really nice option. I'm going to delete that though, and I want you to know that you can also do the same kind of thing, but with slideshows. You can pick a style of slideshow, click continue, and then upload a series of photos. So Weebly has some really good media options for you. You can also easily put a map into your web page. By default, it's showing San Francisco, but if I click on the map, look, I can put in another location and it will update and change the map. There's all sorts of other options as well with the maps. There's a great option here if you want to get a newsletter together. You can just edit this to create a newsletter form that people fill out when they visit your website. There's also a contact form so they can email you or message you through the website. You can add buttons to the page. So you can just click there on the button, highlight the text, and type in the text that you actually want to be on the button. So read about Synthpop. Great. And then I can link that button to any of these things. To an email address, a file, which is a great option, so they can download a video or a file of some kind, a PDF maybe, but also a website. So I'm going to click website, and I'll put in the address of a web page that I want the button to take the viewer to. And it's going to open in a new window. All right, so that should be set up and ready to work. Now you'll notice that so far I've just been adding things to the page vertically, right? I've added text and then I added a picture and then I added a map and a button and that's fine. You can make your website very vertical, but wouldn't it be nice if you could divide up the page a little bit and have one element on the left and another element on the right? I think that would be a great thing, but I don't see a way to do that here at the left with these elements that are in my account here. But notice at the very bottom it says installed apps. Add apps to make your site more powerful. So I'd like to click that add app button and I'll do a search for tables. I want to be able to add a table. And it brings up a few options. I'm going to try this one. Simple table. It's free. I just click. Click add. Simple table will be added to Synthpop Heaven. That sounds good. So I'll connect. Click done. And 
Now I have an installed app here in the lower left. Let's see if it works. If I click and drag that app, it should let me now create tables, and it does. And when I click on the table, it lets me change the number of columns, maybe I just want two columns, and the number of rows if I would like to change that as well. And as you can see, there are other options as well. So I'm gonna click away from that, and I can adjust this table the way I want it to be, just clicking away when I make a change. I can also type. So here in the upper left corner of the table, I could type in something like band, and then off to the right, I could type something else like most recent album. Now, you can't see that very well because of the color of the text along with the background. So I can just click to change the color, and that should make it more readable for you. So give me a minute to add a few bands, and then I will resume the video. Okay, great. Now, of course, I could put pictures in here as well, or links. There's all sorts of options that I could add to this page. Now, in addition to using tables by adding an app, notice that you do have the option to create sections. So to section off different parts of your page, and then you can drag anything into that section, and it will separate it off a little bit from the rest of the web page. You can also put in spacers, just like we have at the top of this website. That's a spacer. You can add another spacer here. Now, there are some great other options as well, but some of these are limited to the paid accounts only, so HD video, audio, but you can add things like some documents, you can add some flash files in, or other types of files. Let's say I have a PDF or a handout in Word format or something like that. You can just drag a file onto the screen, then click in that element, upload a file from your computer, and that file will be downloadable by the students or the audience that you have. I'm gonna delete that out. Notice that you can also add YouTube videos. And so I could put a YouTube video for each of these bands that I'm trying to highlight. However, for you, I expect you to include my video tutorials in your web page, right? You need to add some class to your website. And that's probably the best way you could do that. Okay, so there's the YouTube video spacer that I've added. If you wanna customize it, you just click on it and then copy paste the YouTube video URL, the address. You might need to open a new tab, go to YouTube, find the video, copy paste, and there are some options here you can choose, and then it adds the YouTube video to your page. Moving down the list of elements, notice that you can add some e-commerce items. You can put in some block quotes, an RSVP form, a survey, and even some other options that are kind of exciting that you can look for. But any of these elements that have the lightning bolt, those are not available in the account that you have. So I can't use those unless I upgrade. But you know what, that's okay. Look at all this that I can do. And if I were to continue to develop this website, I think it would be a really cool and worthwhile website. There's one feature that I skipped on purpose and I wanted to save it for last and that is embed code. And this is such an exciting option. If you click and drag and drop the embed code element onto the page, it gives you this section here that says click to set custom HTML. You can click on that and then edit the custom HTML. Now, what is this talking about? Basically, an embed code or custom HTML is a code that you get from something that's out there on the internet. You copy that embed code, you paste it into this box, and it will pull that item that you got the embed code for and pull it into your Weebly website and web page. And it sounds like a copyright violation, but it's not. You're just embedding the existing item into your own website. So for the sake of example, I'm just gonna go to quizlet.com, but this is just one example of many that's out there. And if you're not familiar with Quizlet, Basically, it's a flashcard website, and you can do flashcards for whatever. Let's see if there's a new wave flashcard set. And here's one that I think has pretty close to the right idea. And so I'd like to click on that. And this looks like a pretty good flashcard set featuring some of the better synth pop or new wave bands from the 80s. So I would like to pull this into my website. To do that, I'm just gonna look around for an HTML code or an embed code. They're really one and the same. And here's where you'll find it in Quizlet. Just going here, there's the word embed. I click on it, there's the embed code. I can highlight that embed code, copy it, go back to Weebly and paste it in to the edit custom HTML area. Just paste in that embed code. Then I can click away from the box, 
That's the key to make it actually activate. And there now is this flashcard set and it's added to my Weebly web page. Okay, great. So that's really all there is to building web pages in Weebly. But keep in mind that was just the home page. So now I would need to go also to the next page, my work in this case, and edit that page, about and edit that page, and contact and edit that page. Now what if you don't want all four of those? Or what if you want to change the names for them? Notice what you can do. Up here at the top of the screen, I've been working off of this build tab, but if I click on pages, then it lists all the pages that I have available. Well, I would like to get rid of contact. So I'm gonna click on it, choose delete, and it's gone. Next, where it says my work, I'm gonna click and change it to be music videos. I click away and it makes that change activate. So now it says home, music videos, and about. So that's an important tab. Next we have theme. This is obviously for if you want to change the theme that you chose at the beginning. If you're gonna use e-commerce, you can go to the store. I'll X out of that. You can also add apps. I've already added one by going to the lower left corner on this build screen. That's where I added the app. There are some settings and this is definitely worth looking through because there's some nice options here, including the ability to add editors so that more than one editor can help you work on the website. And there's also the help button. I want to jump back to the build tab though to point out to you that this web page, even though I've been building it and it looks really good, look, the video doesn't quite work exactly the way I would want. I get this pop-up. Also, if I click on the read about synth pop button, it doesn't work. It doesn't take me to the Wikipedia article about synth pop. And my flashcard set also doesn't seem to be working properly. The reason why is because I am in editing mode. I'm editing my website. I'm editing my home page. So to actually experience the real website that I'm building here, you have to go here to the upper right and click on publish. This is another opportunity for Weebly to get me to pay for a domain. I'm going to stick with the free version here, a subdomain of Weebly, and I'll go up and click continue. It's publishing my website, and now this website is published and ready for people to visit. I can check it out by clicking this link, and this is now a real website that anyone can go to and enjoy. And you'll notice that the read about synth pop button works. The video doesn't work, it actually disappeared because it was just a placeholder. I need to put a real video there. The map is interactive, and let's see if my flashcard set works. It looks like it does. And I can change the different modes of Quizlet. If you're not familiar with Quizlet, you might want to watch my YouTube video on Quizlet. It's kind of fun, and it's a nice tool, especially for students and for teachers. So that's really all you need to know about Weebly.com. This is the address of my webpage now, and I just advertise that. I get it out there. I share it with people, and they'll be able to go to my website. Now, let's say a week from now, a month from now, I want to edit my website. I do need to show you what that will be like. So I'm going to X out of this editor, and it's going to take me back a step. And you'll notice it lists my website, and underneath that it gives me some stats. Right now I don't have any stats. It also gives me some form entries. Remember I could have added a form to my website. If anyone uses that form, I will see their entries here. And there's some other options that I see on the screen. So from now on, if I log into my account, I should be able to go to Sites, and I'll see Synthpop Heaven listed there, and any other website that I create. And then I can click Edit Site to get back into the editor that you're already familiar with. There's also a button here that you can click to delete the site if you're done with it. And you can click this plus sign to create a second website for free. At one time, Weebly had a limit to the number of websites that you could create with the free account. It was basically like two or three websites, but I understand that they lifted that limit or increased it. And I believe that that limit now is 10. You can have 10 websites in a free account, which is really a good amount for the free account. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found the tutorial to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for another video from me at least every Monday.
And if you'd like to learn more about these recent releases by 80s new wave and synth pop bands, look in the description below. Also down there you'll see links to my Patreon account. If you're enjoying my YouTube channel, I would invite you to support the channel through my Patreon account, and there are some nice little perks that you can get for your support.